Hey there, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to another installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. My name is Tom Rigsby, your host, and today we're going to talk about everything you need to know about money in 7 minutes or less. How is that for a promise? We'll get to that right after this. Stay tuned. Uh, hey there again, everybody, this morning, uh, Tom Rigsby from TomRigsby.com. Thank you so much for joining me today on 7 Minutes in the Morning. It's a little bit rainy, and it's been a little bit uh, a little bit of lightning and thunder, so I have my office assistant uh, close by. She is uh, always close by when we have days like that. Hey, come here. Come up here. Say hi to everybody. Hey, uh-uh, come here. Hey, come here. There she is. Oh, right there. Can you see? There she is. Just barely in the picture. That's my puppy dog, Raider. All right, so today we're talking about money and everything you need to know about money in seven minutes or less. Okay, you can get down now. Everything you need to know about money in seven minutes or less. I want you to think about think about this for just a minute. And, and consider the language you use around money, right? When you think of, when you think, of, let's see, when you think of somebody who's wealthy, what are words that you use to describe somebody that's wealthy? Or, or I'll even say somebody that's got a lot of money because I redefine wealthy quite frequently, right? What do you, when, when somebody says, what, what are words that your parents or your grandparents use to describe somebody that's wealthy, right? Or describe having a lot of money or not having money. All, all of these words, I want you to think about those for just a minute before I get into today's answer, because our language describes our emotions and our emotions dictate how we feel about things. And so, um, this, this whole topic of money is one that, man, you don't talk about a trigger topic. It gets people's attention, right? So the language that we use, the way that we think about it, that's really important because we project that emotion. We project that expectation out into the world. So let's just say, here, I'll give you some word association, right? Money is the... Fill in the blank down there. If you want, you can put it in the comments. Money is the root of all evil. How many of you have heard of that? How many of you know that that's a, an incorrect quote? The love of money is the root of all evil is the correct quote. But we, we take that, and that taints the way that we think about this. Now, I'm, I'm applying this logic to money, but this, honestly, this could apply to anything, all right? When, when we have an emotional attachment to something and that emotion dictates how we respond to it, we, we begin to believe those things. So here, here's how this really plays out. I'll quit beating around the bush. If you believe that wealthy people, that you have to cheat to be wealthy, right? That the people that, you know, have big house, nice car, lots of money, they cheated somehow, right? Which is, is, yeah. I agree with Brooke, that somehow you have to cheat in order to get there, then you begin to believe that only cheaters have money. I don't want to have money because I don't want to be a cheater. Right? If you believe that you have to be um, a cold, uncaring person in order to get ahead in business, maybe you don't want to get ahead because you don't want to be cold and uncaring. If you believe that uh, presidents and CEOs of companies are just evil people, then you wouldn't ever want to be that, or you wouldn't want anyone you love to be that, because you don't want people to be evil, right? So you see how this, it, if we, and it's really easy, here's the other thing to bear in mind, it's really easy to apply these labels when we abstract ourselves away from it, right? Presidents and CEOs, 
Well, it, it's much easier to, to classify them in their own category when we, when we call them that. But if we started calling them by their names, it's more difficult, right? Because that abstraction makes it easier for us. Brooks got a great comment on money. Money is amoral. It's not good or bad. That is correct. That is the point that I want to get across this morning, right? Money is a tool. It's not good or bad. It's just like a hammer. I can use a hammer to build a house for somebody to live in, or I can use a hammer to beat somebody to death. The hammer doesn't know the difference, and neither does money. The problem is that money is our yardstick for success. It's a terrible yardstick for success, but that's the way society treats it. And so we try to get more, get more, get more so that we can be look more and more and more successful. But as I've pointed out to you guys many, many times, success is more about happiness than it is hoarding anything. Whether it's dollars or Bitcoin or a lead pipe or whatever, it doesn't matter, right? Whatever, the, whatever that unit of measure will be tomorrow, okay, whatever. But I can find happiness fulfillment satisfaction a lot easier if I'm not so focused on that. And if you create value, we'll, we'll talk about value all week this week, I think. But if you are focused on creating value, then those rewards will come. And the rewards will come without regard to what, how they tangibly manifest themselves. There's this whole idea, and uh, the Napoleon Hill really kind of started this idea that if you Tell the universe what you want. The universe has a funny way of conspiring to deliver it to you. It has nothing to do with the universe. It's got everything to do with what's going on up here between the ears, right? And as soon as you let go of this demand to collect and accumulate more money, all of a sudden, you start getting paid. It's funny how it works out that way, but, but it is. All right, so here's what I want you to take away today. First of all... Um, I forgot to say this in the beginning. Let me know that you are here. Give me a comment like Joe and Brooke did. Thank you guys for being here this morning. Leave comments. Let me know some of the things that, um, some of the language you or your family has used around money. Some of the sayings, and, and this, it usually, I mean, it usually shows up as, you know, like sayings your parents or grandparents had about money. Be interested in hearing what some of those are. And if you are, so inclined, how that, how those sayings, how those ideas might have shaped the way that you look at money. And then for tomorrow, um, drop some comments also about how you create value or no, not how you create value. What is value? I'm going to make sure I put that in the comment correctly. What is value? Because we're going to talk about value all week this week how you create it, how you get, uh, what it is, how it moves around, and how people enjoy it. All right, so that's it for today. Thoughts about money, comments, questions, things that uh, that your parents or grandparents said, and then what is value? That's a question for your homework. We'll be back tomorrow to talk about that. It's Monday. It's rainy here, so if you're uh, if it's raining or cold or snowy or otherwise treacherous wherever you are, be safe. And I will be back again tomorrow with another installment, seven minutes in the morning. You guys take care.